Hey, we are pleased to have uh, this guest back on our show. He's a former intelligence official with the U.S. National Security Agency. That's putting it mildly. Uh, he was a whistleblower who exposed that the NSA was doing unconstitutional warrantless mass surveillance on U.S. citizens. He debunked the DNC hack that the the conspiracy theory that the DNC was hacked by Russians. And he also continues to be an outspoken advocate for civil liberties and against unconstitutional violations by the intelligence industry. It is our pleasure to have back with us uh, the great American Bill Binney. Bill, thanks so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me back. Happy ber- happy birthday. Yeah, that's right. Yesterday was my birthday. Yeah. OK. I won't look- say what the number is because I don't like to remember. That I hear stuff. you. I hear you. <laughs> well, you look fantastic. So this is just this is from the ACLU. A federal appeals court just ruled that the NSA's bulk collection of America's phone records was illegal. <clears throat> This ruling, which confirms what we have always known, is a victory for our privacy rights. So, um, a three that was a three judge panel on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that the program, <laughs> which was revealed by whistleblower Edward Snowden, violated U.S. surveillance laws and potentially the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. The metadata collection program was created and approved by the Secretive Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, that's the FISA court, after the passage of the Patriot Act in the wake of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Snowden, who was cited repeatedly in the court's decision, revealed the surveillance program's existence just months after their trial in 2013. Under the program, the NSA collects and analyzes bulk data provided by telecommunication companies. And Edward Snowden commented on this. He said, seven years ago, as the news declared, I was being charged as a criminal for speaking the truth. I never imagined that I would live to see our courts condemning the NSA's activities as unlawful in the sa- and in the same ruling, crediting me for exposing <laughs> them. And yet that day has arrived. <laughs> the ruling of the court demolishes the long held defenses of mass surveillance. After taking into account the best of the government's evidence, the court found the program unlawful and ineffective, establishing the government's public claims of necessity were deceitful. And this is from the freedom of the press says the judge repeatedly cites the Snowden disclosures showing once again, the power of whistleblower driven by conscience and a press dedicated to the truth. All right. So let's bring Bill Binney back. Famous NSA whistleblower himself was framed by the FBI and he outsmarted them. So he didn't end up in prison. He's here with us and he's famous for debunking the uh, Russian hacked, the DNC server, which CrowdStrike re- recently re- uh Admitted in court, they have zero evidence that that happened. So you were proven right once again, Bill. So congratulations on that. So can you just comment on what this uh, uh, federal appeals court just said? Actually, this is the second appeals court to declare those collections uh, illegal. The first was the Second Circuit in early 2012. That 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 came up to that court, uh, and uh, they also declared it uh, illegal and likely unconstitutional. So, and also there was another case that made it to the Supreme Court, Amnesty International versus Clapper, which was also challenging that, uh, that, that kind of collection. It's not just metadata either, it's content also. I keep saying this, and I've been saying this for 19 years. They collect everything, okay? Not, not, nothing is missed. And I know the collection points and all, of, all the locations of where they are across the country, internally in the U.S., all around the world too. So I know all of that. And I did it finding it by using Google. Okay. But, but the point is that they've been doing this all along and they've been trying to keep it out of court. And what they did in the case of the Amnesty International versus Clapper that made it to the Supreme Court, the Solicitor General lied to the Supreme Court to get it thrown out. That, that happened. That's published in the, in the, if you look up the Amnesty International versus Clapper, that case, you'll see all the lies that were given by the Solicitor General to get that thrown out. But that was also doing this challenge. Now we have one in front of them that's gonna be reviewed on the 29th of September as to whether or not the, the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court will hear that case. Uh, and they'll, it's again challenging the constitutionality of them doing this. I mean, it's, a, it's basically straightforward, unconstitutional for them to collect all the, con- all the communications, phone calls, emails, chatter, Web, web surfing, all of that, and financial transactions and travel 
for every U.S. citizen in the in the country. That's just fundamentally illegal. They're also mapping where you are every minute of every day. So they're tracking okay. everybody. So why did we need a court to tell us this? Uh, because um, when Congress passes a, a law, let it, even though it's a stupid law, it, unless it's constitutionally challenged in court, it can stand as a law. So in other words, when they gave retroactive immunity to the telecommunications companies back in 2008 for violating the constitutional rights of everyone, yeah, that's standing because no one's been able to challenge it in court uh, in the in federal court is unconstitutional. Once that happens and it's declared unconstitutional, it fail, it stopped. It's no longer a law. So in, in other words, in, if they can keep the arguments out of court, then they can keep all the all these bad laws they passed to uh, basically participate as as co-conspirators in violating our constitutional rights. When they wrote these laws. They they knew they were unconstitutional because I know they were unconstitutional. I mean, it's 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 like you don't need to be again. You don't need to be a judge or even a lawyer to figure that out, no. right? No. And it's yet, pretty straightforward. And yet, nobody in this country seems to give a shit about this, right? Isn't that weird? It is it be is it because the media doesn't care? Yeah, I I, I don't understand this myself, Jimmy. I mean, it's just un 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 American. I mean, I, I don't know of in the past any Americans that would stand up for it. I know that, you know, some of the people who were interviewed for the records for like military service, people who were fought in World War II were saying things like, what did we fight for? Because, you know, you know, we were fighting for the, the freedom and, the, and human rights uh, in our Constitution. And that's been thrown away. Uh, under the guise of keeping us safe, which is exactly what dictators say. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly uh, what... To I, go ahead. I was going to say that's exactly what the Nazis issued in Special Order 48 right after the Reichstag fire. It said exactly that. If you go back and look at that, it's on the web. You can go read it. And then go read NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, Section, Section 1021, 1021, says exactly the same thing. You know? So what, what's, what section... Correct me if I'm wrong. What Section 1021 of the NDAA Act says... Is that the government can uh, arrest you and can and then uh, put you in jail without a charge indefinitely, if they could, if they if they charge that you're a terrorist, right? Yeah, without any due process. That's right. Without any due process. Right. So right now, so what that means is, and I try to explain this to people, that means that Barack Obama and the Democrats and the Republicans both agree that we should get rid of habeas corpus. Because yep. that's what they did. Right. They they got rid of the writ of habeas corpus. And I try to remind people, habeas corpus is in the Magna Carta. So yes, we is. got rid of that. They repealed the Magna Carta. <laughs> and now we are operating on a liberty view from somewhere around the 1100s. Yep. Is that, could, could you confirm that? Absolutely. It also throws away, scraps our, our Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments. And... I, I, I again, I don't, it's it's I, I I chalk it up to the fact that we have media owned by six billionaires who aren't interested in democracy or our Constitution or anything. And that's that's what's going on. That's why people don't care, because people are, you know, just tools of propaganda mm -hmm. anyway, which is why half the country thinks Russia controls our, our elections. It's because they're just victims of propaganda. And yeah. uh, and it really it just let me let me add something to that. It's a little more malicious than that. Uh, uh, sure. Back in 1983, I believe it was, uh, Casey, the former director of CIA, I think I mentioned this to you on your on a previous program. He he said uh, that uh, we are we are actively infiltrating the mainstream media, and you'll you'll know that we've succeeded once everything that's believed by the population of the country is false. So they that is a true quote. I looked that up. That is actual. That he actually said that. That was the head of the CIA. Yep. Uh, we'll know we're successful when everything the American people believe is false. And so that's happened because everything the, pe the American people believe about our elections is completely false. They think that it's controlled by a foreign yeah, government. Yeah. And what it's really controlled by is uh, corporations here in America. 
and you don't get and your democracy was stolen from you a long time ago and it's done right out in the open and it's called campaign finance and uh, that's why <laughs> if you look at the Princeton study uh, y- your opinion never gets reflected in uh, legislation you know whose opinion gets reflected in legislation the upper 10 percent of income earners so if 50 percent of the upper 10 percent want something to be passed legislatively, 50 percent of the time it does get passed. A hundred percent of the lower 80 percent of income earners could want something and it ain't never getting done like Medicare for all, by the way, which nine yeah. out of 10 Democrats want and a majority of Trump voters also want. That is never happening because our government has been hijacked, not by Russia, but it's been hijacked by Goldman Sachs. And it's been hijacked by Pfizer, by Raytheon, and Exxon. That's who has hijacked our government. It is not Putin or Russia, which you proved, right? right? Yep. And so, and also, is- I would add to that the bankers and uh, the, and Silicon Valley and the and a large number of the higher level uh, permanently in place bureaucrats in the agencies of the U.S. government. Okay. They're all a part of this, you know. So you know when you talk about William Casey saying that the. With that quote about how we'll know we're successful and the American people believe nothing but falsehoods, you know, they used to have to hide and, and they used to have to infiltrate newsrooms. Now, I don't know if you notice what's going on, but they just out in the open hire CIA people as their staff members. And now those are the people who populate the green rooms at MSNBC and CNN. Have you noticed that? Absolutely. Yep. And and. So they don't even pretend to hide that the C- they don't debunk the CIA. They go to the CIA to say, come on our show and spread propaganda, which they don't debunk. They treat the CIA guy's word as truth. That's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they, and they lie through their teeth and they get away with it without any accountability. So let me just get to your Supreme Court case. <laughs> now that's coming up. Uh, when, when does that start? Uh, they, they do a review of these cases, uh, uh, and the review starts on the 29th of September. I don't know how many cases they have, but they have to review which ones they're going to hear next year. And if it passes the hearing and saying, uh, the government, by the way, did not contest anything we said in our uh, petition to the court. So, they, I mean, I, I figure they didn't contest it because I would have openly called them on it, you know, and basically forced them to discuss it out in the open. And they didn't want to do that. So so I think they're depending on the Supreme Court to, to protect them. So when you say to protect them, you mean they probably won't hear the case? Uh, if they don't hear the case, you know, you can be assured that they're protecting them. Yes. And they're a part of it, too. And what do you think? What happens if they do take the case? Uh, we're going to be in there because I've included a lot of the material from Snowden showed the diagrams of the programs that I organized for them. And they, they haven't changed a damn thing with them. They're still the same programs. You know, they didn't even change the names on some of them. So the so, pro- so you're talking about the surveillance programs that you developed, which are unconstitutional. Right. I had built in the, the three things that made them constitutional. One was the filter right up front where you only pulled in bad guys and those that fell in a zone of suspicion based on deductive, inductive, abductive logic, which would have been like. 1.000001% of the data would be all you would take in. And the rest of it would simply go by. That would give everybody in the planet, you know, uh, uh, privacy, including U.S. citizens and everybody around the world. And, and then I encrypted anybody that came in that we pulled in that we didn't know was a terrorist or a criminal of some sort. I encrypted all their attributes. So even the analysts inside NSA couldn't tell who it was. And certainly FBI or DEA couldn't go into the NSA database like they do now and interrogate anybody they want to. They couldn't because they wouldn't know who they're looking at. Right. So and then the final one was the audit routine that audited everybody that came into the network to see where they went, what they did while they were there, you know, who they looked up, all of that. So they nobody could have hidden anything they were doing. And they, they didn't like any of that. Hayden. Uh, uh, and Tenet and Bush and Cheney took those things out and just took in them and removed the filters so that allowed them to pull in everything. So the mass surveillance that's unconstitutional, that the court just ruled was unconstitutional, you are the person who actually invented those systems, but you had built into it safeguards to protect Americans' identities, which would then make it constitutional, but then they got rid of those protections, so now it's unconstitutional. You blew the whistle on that, and they tried to put you in jail. That's right. Okay. And they fabricated evidence to try to do that. That's why I called it the Department of Just Us. Yeah. We the people are not included in that. 
Yeah, so you're you're a good American and you're helping catch the bad guys, the terrorists. You invent these amazing systems. They then turn it into something unconstitutional. You yep. tell people about it and they try to make you the criminal, which is exactly what the government always does. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program, and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.